interwebs. Tis I, Sebastian Petroni, and this is another fun-filled, exciting, you couldn't live your life without it, episode of F3 G2. And I am wearing a cardboard, uh, I think they told me it's purple. It looks pink to me. I don't do colors so good. Um, cardboard pin pad with a, Gar- a Guy Gardner hero click figure. Because... Um, okay, we'll dive right in. First episode, first issue to review here, we got the Justice League number 37. Um, they discuss the Amazo virus, and by they I mean Lex and his sister discuss, why the hell did you do this? And she calls him out on all his uh, noble purposes. Oh, guy got enough for down, go boom. Um, on all his noble reason she's like nah I can always tell when you're lying um, and you're doing it again. plus they have a fight with patient zero and um, Batman's infected continues to be it's it's <laughs> what can I tell you it's Jeff Johns and Jason Faybach on Justice League therefore it's awesome speaking of this got a little weird for me um, I'm waiting to see where they go with it. Uh, Batman 37, continuing Endgame. The return of the more menacing than ever Joker. And even just the haircut makes him creepier. The shave sides somehow makes him creepier. It's, it tells you the party's over. It's all it's a no-nonsense haircut, and this time around he's a no-nonsense Joker. Um, things take a grim turn for uh, for Gordon, who I don't know if we should still call Commissioner, I don't think he is, and, uh, you know, so does that, but apparently, I don't know, I'll throw some spoilers at you if you haven't read it, um, it's hinted that the Joker existed, like, far back to, like, the 30s, 40s, (laughs) as a Joker, you know, before his chemical bath, what's going on, I don't know what's going on. I mean, I've loved everything they've done, but I don't, I, that's a big leap. I'm waiting for an explanation. That's what I'm waiting for, because I need my Joker to have his I got dumped in a vat and became a Joker origin and not his I've been the Jokers. You know, it's like Joke Al Ghul, the, I don't know, the the, the Lazarus Comedy Club. I don't, I don't know. I don't know how that works. Speaking of Lazarus Comedy Clubs, Guess who's back? Back again. Um, that's right. It's uh, Eminem as Robin. It's you get to see a fist fight between Batman and Darkseid. Things you never expected to see. Um, while Batgirl has to hack Cyborg, while everyone else is getting attacked by Parademons, because you know, typical Tuesday in Hell. If Hell is apocalypse. Um, is good, and they bring back my boy, and it's really touching, and they haven't kicked into the, the powers aspect yet, but as we know, he's coming back with superpowers. And uh, I'm fine with that, because Damien's back, and I don't care. Plus, they've screwed up Superboy so much that I will, I will take Superboy Damien, and I will accept that. I will, I will accept that as a thing that can happen in the new 52, because fuck it. Um, but this in and of itself is good. I've, um... It's weird, though, just because Batman on Apocalypse is so out of a Batman element, um, but you get to see him so singularly driven, and uh, you know this is, like, so cathartic for him, because if he thought it would work on bodies that old, you know he'd be going back to Apocalypse to get more of the stuff that he used to bring uh, Damien back with, you know, Thomas and Martha Wayne's bodies, and, you know, Possibly everyone who ever died in Gotham <laughs> on his watch. Um, hey, why are you dead on my watch? Um, Batman Eternal. This issue, number la, 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 37. <laughs> it caught up to the... That's creepy. Um, it caught up to the regular. It's, it's got as many issues as the entire New 52. Um, everyone wants to win Bane over. All the bad guys take turns trying to... Bane, be my best friend. No. I will not be your best friend. You can be my best friend, Mr. Bane. You don't know what best friends are. 
I was born in Best Friend, raised on them, immersed myself in Best Friend. Um, because now I only read Bane dialogue in that voice. And it takes away any effect that's supposed But some of these speeches, it's like they wrote them in that voice, too. I have no need for you. In fact, I have only remained here this long so that I can ensure the gas main I had... I, <laughs> so I can ensure that the gas main I broke was not detected through the smell of rotting food. It only makes sense that way now. Um, but this one slows down a little bit, then, especially since we had our big reveal of look who's in charge, and then there's nothing on that here. So... Thunderworld Adventures Multiversity, oh my god, is like the best Multiversity ever, and that includes the one that had Blue Beetle in it. Yeah, I went there. This is awesome. Savannah uses science, Dr. Savannah uses science to make his own scientific rock of eternity, and then is able to now, when his kids, this is a long time ago, Savannah was assisted by his wife and kids, okay, it is important to remember. So when his kids say Savannah, they turn into, like, Captain Marvel equivalents. And when he says, when Dr. Savannah says his own name, he turns into Black Savannah. <laughs> and it's great, and it's awesome, and the I'm art awesome. is the art is gorgeous, the, the story is good. Savannah's daughter, who looks kind of like a little, she looks like a cross between Dr. Savannah in drag and um, the one daughter from Bob's Burgers. But when she says the name, she turns into this, like, busty, sultry, super sex goddess that has, like, um, an interesting effect on Captain Marvel Jr. Or does she? He seems to play her rather well. Like a Stradivarius, one would say. Um, so that was pretty damn cool. So much fun. Yay. I want that world to get its own book. Ms. Marvel. See, look, she followed Captain Marvel because it's funny. But the other Captain Marvel is in here. We should get that too and make like a... Oh, I got my phone down. Um, make a Captain Marvel... Where is it? Where is it? Okay, we'll, we'll go this. Marvel sandwich. Boom. It's Captain Marvel. Look, vintage looking cover. Very clever with the cleverosity. Um, this is so good. Kelly Sue DeConnick and Captain Marvel are like the peanut butter and jelly of my mind because they're just the perfect combo. I love it. And this issue, so good, and starts a two-part Christmas carol. Um, carol gets letters from home, and, you know, a lot's going on that they kind of miss her for, and she misses them, but also there's stuff that she was like, oh, if I'd have been there, I could have helped. And then she gets, you know, she's got Lila Shaney with her, so she's going to go home for a little quick pop-in on ye old planet Earth um, just in time for Christmas. And it's, it's really good. The art is threefold. There's three parts to this story as she's reading different letters. So you get David Lopez, um, um, Marcio Takara, and uh, Laura Braga. Each one has a different tone that fits what's going on. Really perfect. Um, it's, it's a wonderful thing. It's a wonderful thing. Ms. Marvel, also a wonderful thing. And it's the return. She gets to fight um, her, her greatest villain, who is in, in fact an insane human parakeet clone comp hybrid so that, that alone that's my review is it's the return of her arch nemesis the evil mastermind that is a human cockatiel clone guy i don't know you need to read this book and understand that it is like so great teen titans continues to be on the plus side of okay i really want it to be great it's so much better than it was so, but I want, you know, hey, we're at issue five. Kick it off. We meet Power Girl. She's not dressed as Power Girl. She's dressed as Wonder Girl. But it's okay. Everybody is because Wonder Girl has like a gang of fans that are actually more of a gang than a fan club. Um, so that's interesting. Um, Robin knows something's up. That was so good for me because Robin was falling way too much for, uh, um, what's his face? Uh... What's his face? Whatever the hell, Black. What the hell's his name? Manchester Black. His whole spiel of, you know, oh, you should join Star Labs. And, but he knows. He's like, yeah, I felt too good about it. So clearly something's up. So it's good that he was going on. And you get 
Gar spying in the form of a first a a, a a louse, then a mouse, because he rhymes up in the house. Um, is is Thrabian? Is Thrabian? But Raven's costume's still terrible. All new X Men. When Jean met Jean, this is they're still in the Ultimate Universe. They've met Ultimate Spidey. Now they meet the Ultimate X Men. They're all kind of scattered across the world. Doctor Doom drugs the Beast. Iceman fights in the desert of Arizona. Um, it's continuing. You know, uh, Mama Desar on art and uh, you know the colorists are Marte uh, Gracia and Marcelo Maello. Um, the book's just beautiful to look at, and Brian Ben. My, Brian Bendis, um, it's still, you know, the X-Men were clearly the book he was meant to write because I love his X-Men and I tolerated his Avengers, but I love his X-Men. Guardians of the Galaxy. Venom suit, Venom suit, who got the Venom suit? Um, first Groot, then Rocket, and we leave off with them trying to figure out what to do when the suit goes on Drax. Yeah, that's yeah. not it's not great. Um, the book is great. This is another thing Bendis is supposed to write. Um, because sometimes Bendis gets a little too carried away with the wise-ass voice, like everyone's a wise-ass, because clearly Bendis is. But this is a book where, no, it's legitimate, everyone's a wise-ass, so you can do that. Supergirl number 37 was a whole lot of meh. I don't like this new direction much. The only reason I'm even checking it out is because there's an arc coming up that's going to involve Superboy. He's not in this. And nothing else held me at all. It all seems very forced. I don't like... I Well, I like some of the ideas they did with Maxima, where they kind of changed her so that instead of being, you know, the original Maxima was... I'm looking for the perfect mate to make a perfect creature and we can be the perfect king and queen and raise perfect babies. Um, but this one, that's actually her parents, that's what her parents wanted to do. Is She wants to be an actual ruler, but her parents seem to think she's only good for making perfect babies and only sent her to the school for the idea. So that was actually kind of cool, but but the delivery, the execution is, is slacking and everybody seems kind of forced cookie cutter characters more than actual people. And Captain Comet was one of my favorite characters. And New 52 Comet, when it has the line, um, as they describe him, Comet, clever and thoughtful, but preens far too much. You've already just lost me on Comet, one of my former favorite characters. And this book mostly focuses on Savo, the lion guy from space that just happens to be named after a place on Earth where two lions famously made Val Kilmer try to speak with an Irish accent. Um, <laughs> Spider-Woman, not in a new costume yet. If you read the internet, you know she's getting a new costume. This sort of vaguely, potentially, hints at Spider-Verse. But is mostly a lot of I don't care. Which is sad because it's Dan is hopeless. And I love me some Dan is hopeless, but this book just isn't working. Look, the spider chick is twerking. I needed a rhyme, and that worked. Bum, bum. Batman, Superman. Batman, Superman. Dee, 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 dee. No. Superman. <laughs> um, Greg Park. <laughs> um, Batman is a. They meet new Lobo. They also. Meet Hector Hammond, and some some stuff goes on. But really, the best part is Superman versus New Lobo, because there is like the greatest thing, the greatest thing. Superman says to New Lobo, "Get the hell off my planet." Lobo says, "Make me." Next page. <laughs> Lobo, hurtling in space with I'm flames there. around him because he, he broke his escape velocity, calling his human cast that I'm not a huge fan of from his book, 
with the dang Emily I'm gonna need to pick up because Clark tossed him off the planet I'm not clapping the removal of, of you know, begrudgingly I'm liking new Lobo because Cullen Bunn but Craig Park making him do that that was just a great thing of you know Lobo you know, make me it's, <laughs> throws him off the planet Axis number eight continues to have great dialogue and Nothing mostly else? pointless story. <laughs> it's possible that um, it is possible that Carnage just, I don't think he's dead, but it's possible that he just sacrificed himself to save the earth while singing Freebird. <laughs> told you the dialogue in this oh, yeah. is so much better than the story. And, and then leading to a line as Spider-Man fights the now evil um, inverted X-Men as he gets to jump on Storm's back announcing the worst person I ever knew uh, you know the, the Colossus is like what could have stopped it about the bomb that that Cassidy that, that Cletus Cassidy may or may not have sacrificed himself stopping and Spidey you know what could have stopped it Spidey jumps in going the worst person I ever knew doing the noblest thing I've ever seen and that's just, you know... That's good dialogue. And that's, you know, there's, there's some great dialogue in here. And it's a shame that the story just isn't as great as the dialogue. All new Captain America. Look, it's the all new Nomad. Unless somebody were to kill him at the end of the issue. Is he dead? Oh, no. Because you know, this is where it goes up to. So proper him or still Axis? Um, in here, he's proper. He's not axist and inverted like in Captain America and the Avengers. Um, and this, he's all good guy. Yeah. There's a lot yeah. of, in the comics that came out this week, there's a lot of heroes getting their heads stomped on. Darkseid stomps on Batman's head. Crossbone stomps on uh, Falcon America's head. It's just a lot of head stomping. Captain America. <laughs> Fantastic Four is a book that is ending. This is number 14. This is great, because mostly because Charles Soul, but also because Spider-Man versus Inverted Medusa. Medusa. Some great interaction, some great wordplay, some great dialogue, and some great stuff. Then Medusa dealing with the fact that some of her you know, most trusted Inhumans Called the Avengers because they don't know what's going on with this whole access thing, but they're just like, mm, this is like lost her shit. Can somebody help? And she's like, betrayal! So she's like, fuck it, you can have it, to Adeline, Adeline, Adeline. Uh, I'm out of here. World's End number two. Pissing me off. I mean, World's End, you know, World, Earth 2, World's End number 11. Pissing me off because they're making Bart up bad and keep moving. Um, Mr. Miracle closer to Fury, the daughter of Wonder Woman, and I don't remember who that was trained by Steppenwolf or whatever. Um, That's stupid. Mr. Miracle plus Barta equals don't fuck with that. He, he took Lois from Earth One Clark. Don't take, since the new gods, there's only one new Genesis, so they're the same for every Earth. Don't be taking Barta from the. You know, no, no. At the risk of sounding like every whiny fanboy on the internet. No, there, no. there's certain things you're not allowed to just fuck with. And um, yeah, this is some Kirby age. This is a Kirby marriage. Don't fuck with the Kirby marriage. Thank you, DC. Wonder Woman number 37. I loved the Azarello Chang Wonder Woman, so I wasn't sure what I was going to make of. David Finch on art and David Finch's wife that we've never heard of writing. But David Finch's wife that we never heard of writing, I like her. She's good. I'm glad I've now heard of David Finch's wife, who has a name, but it just says M. Finch on here. You, as we've known from any episode I've ever looked at, whenever I go looking for a title page, it is never anywhere near where I go looking for the title page. So finding people's names... It works well. Meredith Finch. Um, 
Plus, very important thing happens in here on two levels. I'm going to give you a spoiler countdown. This is important. There's a character in here, all right? At the end. Sacrifices are made, and I don't know what her new version is going to be like in the new 52, but in 3, 2, 1, Donna Troy makes a new 52 appearance. And to make my creepy cameraman happy, Donna Troy's first appearance, she naked. Ooh, naked Donna Troy. Naked Donna Troy. Coming out of a cauldron. So what's this mean for the new 52? It means we got Donna Troy. As the new 52 tends to teach us, it's like the monkey's paw. Anytime someone says, I wish they would give us this character, the new 52 does and immediately makes us wish we'd never ask for that character because they do horrible, horrible things to them. Little uh, freaking um, Napoleon Dynamite looking Ted Cord hanging out in an issue of... <laughs> of... Uh, I don't know, evil, whatever the hell that was called. What was this guy, was that called? Forever Evil? Yeah, Forever Evil. Um, Wally West fans, they clamored for Wally oh, West. Yeah. No. They got almost Wally West. Um, Iris? Uh, anytime you ask for anybody, they're like, hey, bring me this character. That's not this character. So, that'll probably end badly. Um, Scarlet Spiders. Mine has screwed up staples. What the hell is it like that? This is probably going to be my billion dollar comic, and now it's worth nothing because the staples are broken. Um, it wasn't going to be a billion dollar comic. Um, it's okay. There's a cool concept that these spider hunters are clones themselves. So every time you kill them, they're just recloned. So who's out there finding this out and trying to prevent the reclonification? Well, the three clones um, Kane, Ben Riley, and. The Jessica Drew clone of Peter Parker, female clone of Peter Parker, Ultimate Spider Girl, now called um, Black Widow. Hobgoblin is very, very silly. I like it, but it's a little too silly. I don't think being axist would make him quite this silly. I mean, he was always very, you know, I'm going to make a buck on this. But in this, he's almost like... Deadpool stupid? Yeah, he's like Deadpool stupid. Um... Which is fine, you know, for Deadpool and everything. It's not a Deadpool knock. You know what I mean? You know, you, people who like Deadpool like him for the Deadpool stupid. But I don't see this, you know, this guy becoming that level of silly. I don't have an S, I have a number. Solitary. Um, number one of four from Devil's Due. Uh, this is good. This is a... We're getting the story in flashback and what's happening right now. A hero is on death row for deaths he claims not to have committed. He says he was trying to save people, and he's not responsible for the deaths. Um, but apparently one of the deaths included the warden's wife, so it's not going well for him. Uh, plus, it turns out they give him the electric chair, and he's um, one of those heroes who regenerates and wakes back up. So now they have an unkillable guy that the warden, you know, you can kill him and he'll get better. And the warden hates this guy, so they can just beat him perpetually in solitary. And um, at the same time, he's trying to figure out what happened. His parents were superheroes, and he was originally a sidekick. And whatever happened also killed his parents. And he was trying to save the day, and it didn't go well. And it's a neat little, you know, we've seen the, you know, the hero, de you know, deconstructed a lot of times. But this is a different little, very specific angle on it, and I really, really liked it. Okay. Future's awesome. End, number 33, is... The Atom was really cool, and there's, you know, future Firestorm stuff. That's about as good as that got. Flashback issue that my former review partner, Sean, if you guys used to watch the old show on a former site that will remain nameless, sillybritches.com. That's not the name of the site. That's our code word. Shh, tell no one. Um, Sean didn't like it. It's all flashback. The whole story kind of ends with catching up to now, just for a little in, in between, just for a little segue to the next issue. It's Miles having the talk with his father. His father's like, look, let me tell you what happened. And it turns out his father was 
um, an agent of S.H.I.E.L.D. who was undercover on a task force to try and take down the Kingpin and did a lot of things he's not proud of. So having a son who's doing this, it was a bit much for him because he didn't want that kind of life for his son. So it's good, just doesn't have a lot of Miles Morales. And uh, that, that, that upset Sean. Superman Batman, didn't we review that? Wait, it's World's Finest. Superman Batman of Earth 2. Um, apparently on Earth 2, Bruce and Catwoman's relationship is different, but still is kind of messed up as New 52 Batman and Selina. Um, she like scratches his face while talking to him, and, and he's like all into that. Um, <laughs> but it was good. Um, I know this is one of the canceled books for you know, the upcoming months, so I'll be sad to see it go, but, uh, I'll to, be sad to say anything, go that, that, that Levitz writes, Paul Levitz, Paul Levitz should be writing everything, though he'd be very tired, and Harbinger Faith number zero was really good, really gets into Faith as, um, a hero, and someone who wants to be good, and someone who wants to be accepted and someone who wants to be in love and uh, someone who is more or less at peace with who she is and is comfortable with the fact that yes she's heavy and yes she's a total geek chick but she's she's owned that and she's okay with it and it was really really good really sweet she's just you don't have a lot of characters like this because you know there's comic book laws that say we have to draw you to be hot even if you're you know, like, um, even if you're supposed to be, like, in a lot of the DC books, there's an ad for the Clarion stuff. I don't know if it's in this. We'll see if it is. Because that'll help support what the hell I'm talking about. Yeah, and look. They got this Zell chicken. And the description says she's young, gorgeous, and she's a little chunky. But, and I'm all for, you know, a little weight on the characters so that, you know, I can feel like I could potentially be in a comic book universe, but um, this is her here. That's the a little chunky. I don't see the chunk. Not a lot. Um, I just see um, curvy, and that's it. I just, you know. And the fact that they have to learn she's young, gorgeous, and she's a little chunky. Why do the chunky people have to be gorgeous too? Why can't we just have some normal people? Um... You know, I, I, they're, they're making the effort, but only in writing. You know, and but this, you know, Faith, Faith's a big girl, but Faith. I mean, it's such a perfect name for her, and I, I loved this book. I mean, I love this character. I love, I love this. There's great little flashbacks, great modern scenes. She gets asked to join Unity. Um, she has to examine her goals as a hero, her goals as a person and her um, goals with Torque and the relationship that she's in. It's really, really well done. Um, Joshua Dysart wrote it so naturally it's well done, and then Robert Gill and uh, Jose Villaboria. Um, you can answer yourself. That's what the sign says. Please. On the art and colors, and it's it's really solid issue, really good. And that's everything I got. So uh, I'll see you next week. Assuming uh, Stephen doesn't have more operations and forget to delete stuff and not put this up. Christmas next week. Oh, crap. I won't see you next week because Christmas is next week. So I'll see you in two weeks and Stephen can have all the operations and forget whatever the hell he needs to. <laughs>